Like the great Brian Lara before him, Chivnareen Chanderpaul is a strong batsman in a team still struggling to find its feet. While this is a fact he has had to deal with for much of his 17-year career, it didn't stop him from scoring runs. So for a man who so stubbornly values his wicket, a slump in form last year has brought on pressure for Chanderpaul to pull up stumps on both test and one-day cricket. I've been hearing a lot of negative things from a lot of people around, people who you've known over the years and people who have played for um, Western East, you know, saying that, saying things that, you know, you're skinny, you're bony and you will never make it, you'll never make a um, hundred test matches, you've never played so much games in Western East, you, you, you've been hearing a lot of those things in the past, a lot of negative things and I'm actually happy that, you know, I'm, I actually did all of it and um, you know, looking forward to, to compete, you know, co continue and um, carry on. He may be approaching his 38th birthday, but the true fighter that Chanderpaul is, he's sure to give nothing away, not least his wicket. Known for doggedness at the crease, he's the only man to have faced 1,000 consecutive balls in tests without conceding his wicket and is a greater threat when the chips are down. All too often finding himself in a position where maintaining his wicket is crucial to the West Indian innings and rarely lets the pressure of a situation get to him. You know, I guess one of those uh, situations you go out and you know your, your team under pressure and um, you know you have to put your head down, you have no choice and you have to fight and um, I guess it, it just boils, boils down to that, you know, you're just under pressure and you know you have to do well, you have to fight for your team and I guess one of those situations it comes up and you, you know, it boils down to, you know, put, putting out the good work when it, when it matters. Chanderpaul has had to do the bulk of this firefighting alone since the departure of Brian Lara in 2006. But the team Chanderpaul broke into for the first time in 1994 was a class apart and still had players who made the difference between a dangerous side and a team looking on the way. Obviously, you know, you know, when you came in, when I came in, I know what the team was like then, you know, we still had Desmond there too, Desmond Hens. And, you know, the team was actually still doing well, we were still doing well, we were still winning and, um, you know, and, you know, you notice over the year the decline of our team. Um, you know, but you know, it's been a long stretch over ten years, over a decade of that. While the West Indies plunged from one depth to another, the man from Guyana grew from strength to strength, quickly transforming himself from an adept second fiddle into the man ready to take over. Most of his innings were built around embarrassing team collapses. But nothing stopped the left-hander from picking up bagfuls of runs. Bit of brilliant innings. His team applauding him. The West Indian spectators applauding him. From the 268 ODIs that he's played in, including five World Cups, Chanderpaul has 11 centuries and tallies over 8,700 runs, second only to Lara in the all-time West Indian batting charts. Playing 137 tests, he's the most capped West Indian ever. Chanderpaul has amassed 9,700 plus runs at an impressive 49 and 24 test tons, including a career best unbeaten 203 on his home ground in 2005. That's his double century. He gets it with a boundary. And Chibnarayan Chanderpaul becomes the fourth West Indies captain, fifth West Indies captain to score a double century. The left-hander came of age in 2006 when he amassed 744 runs at 57.23. He then turned it on in England in 2007, averaging close to 150 in three tests, thanks to back-to-back -back undefeated centuries. The Guyanese won Man of the Series and ICC Cricketer of the Year in 2008, thanks largely to those exploits. Sit around Chanderpaul. He has had 
make the most outstanding tour here in the month in the time in West Indies cricket. We're not all as well. It was always a challenge going out there and playing against England is one and then playing in that condition where the ball does a bit more than anywhere else you would think in the world. So it's always a challenge go to England and play in England and um, compete out there and it's difficult, you know, and when you do well out there you 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 be proud about it, you know, and some things that um, uh, all players around the world I think looking forward to, you know, going to England, going to different conditions and do well. Two yardsticks of greatness for a West Indian cricketer are reaching 100 test matches and bettering the run tally of Sir Vivian Richards, arguably the most destructive batsman in the game's history. By achieving this, Chanderpaul joins Lara as a modern Windies great. Well, obviously, you know, playing 100 test matches for West Indies you know, not not a lot of people have done that, and then to actually pass the the great man's um, score, you know, it's a hell of an achievement for a player like myself or any other young players coming up from the West Indies. He may not be the most fierce batsman from the Caribbean, nor the most flamboyant, but quite a few of his own exited strips just below his eyes are as much synonymous with him as his unorthodox front-on batting stance. And he belongs to a select group of batsmen in world cricket who mark their guards according to an old family tradition. Well, it was something that passed on from my dad to me um, from since I was uh, probably eight years old, you know. Um, uh, it's just something I find comfortable doing, something that you, know, you just mark a guard there and you know which is yours. The man from Demerara is one of the few Indo-Guyanese to have played for the West Indies and can certainly lay claim to being among the best of them. I don't know if it's going to sound like that or what it's going to sound like in the future, but um, you know, I've always looked up to, to a lot of them in the past. Um, the one that really helped me a lot was Rohan Kanai and he still does and I still call him and ask him for advice and whenever I need it he just give it to me and he's a straight up person and he he's one of those guys you know back in the olden days don't make any jokes he just give you like it is and if you like it or not you just have to take it. <laughs>